It was just over two years ago where the Master of Four mechanic was introduced and for the first time ever we got a big change to the game, not just as new monsters, but as how it completely revamped the game itself. And that went down perfectly well, right? That was fine. Nobody had any issues with it. People were really optimistic and happy about not being able to summon action deck monsters as easily as they once did, right? Hmm. So because national season is over, Banlist is probably not going to be for a few days or weeks. I think this would be a great time and opportunity to sit down and let's think about Master Rule 5 and what it could be, what it definitely isn't going to be, and some of the ideas and suggestions that I've collected from myself as well as my community on Twitch and Discord, which you can join and check out uh, in the description down below. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at what exactly could the requirements for Master Rule 5 be. I'm going to give you some of the rules and suggestions that I have for my idea. And then we'll be talking about a little bit of the flaws and alternatives to this. So I hope you're excited because this took a while to think about. So when I ask you, what is going to be Master Rule 5? Ah, you're probably thinking of some cool, amazing, innovative things no one has ever come up for, huh? Like link spells. Or, or maybe, you know, hey, you can synchro summon with scales now. Field trap cards? The point I'm trying to make here is that Master Rule 5 isn't going to be something as simple as that can just be written via card text. Think about it this way. A Master Rule is a complete revamp and change of the very fabric of the game itself or the introduction of a completely brand new summoning mechanic. When you say something like Ixi Pendulums and stuff like that, you really need to ask yourself, is your idea able to be simply just written into card text? Because let's be real, Link Spells can simply just be made into card text. They don't need to make an entire new master rule for something like that, do they? So that's probably the first major condition I would place on what master rule 5 is going to be. And that, well, it needs to be something high impact enough that it's actually going to matter, but not low impact enough that it can simply be written away into card text in the same way that something like link arrows are. Same with something like, you know, trap cards that can be activated from the hand. Let's try a process of elimination and find out just exactly what Master Rule 5 is likely to not be. So my first point here is that I don't think Master Rule 5 is going to be the simple combining of a new monster to make a powerful monster. We already have Fusion Summoning, Ritual Summoning, XE Summoning and Synchro Summoning, which if you really think about it, are similar to each other in a lot of ways in that the idea is you combine two monsters to make a more powerful monster. And as we've seen with the last two Master Rules, they are not exactly about that. Yes, Link Summoning is kind of putting two monsters to make a stronger monster, but other changes came along with it to make it more impactful to the game rather than just making a big, more powerful, strong boy. My second condition here is that I don't think it's going to be as high impact as Master Rule 4 was. You see, Master Rule 4 really, really changed the game. The zones were shuffled around, how you summon extra monsters was completely revamped. And remember, this is a business in the end. They have to attract players, they have to bring people in to try their new game and grow their fan base. So I think completely changing the game yet again, will probably jade a lot of current players and maybe potentially hurt the possibility of uh, bringing back older players who used to play. It has to be big enough that it actually makes an impact, but not as big that you are potentially harming your current player base or potential player base. And my third condition, well, you need to base an anime around it. It has to be cool. It has to be fun. It has to be interesting. Trap field spells aren't interesting or fun. P Pendulum link monsters, like, it's, it's, just, it's just whatever, you know? An anime has to be made around this. And so this cool new crazy summon has to be something that's wow enough, but simple enough to keep people engaged. And my final point is, well, another process of elimination here is, I don't think it's going to be scale cards. A lot of people have suggested, hey, Master of Five is just gonna introduce scale cards. Well, I think that we already kind of have that, but in Duel Links and in Speed Duels, and, you know, say what you want about Speed Duels, they're still trying to make it work. <laughs> We can't really have another anime with something we've already got. And that's basically the, the requirements. So what does that leave us with? Well, let me present to you my idea here. Now, disclaimer, I want you to focus on the concept 
and the sort of fundamental mechanics about my idea here, rather than trying to say, oh, but this effect is overpowered or this has too much attack, etc., etc., because right? that's not important. These things can be balanced and tuned. Think about conceptually, mechanically. Does it sound like a good idea in theory, but just needs some minor changes? Ladies and gentlemen, my idea for Master 05 is Deck Masters. Deck masters. But Farfa, they've already done this before. You said that they can't do something they've already done before. Deck masters, I believe, only really appeared for like a season in Yu-Gi-Oh! And as far as I could tell, didn't have that much of an impact on the gameplay itself. But I think this is actually the perfect idea. It looked really cool and awesome in the anime. And I think incorporating it into card form is possible, especially if we look at other card games and how they incorporate, for example, quests or planeswalkers or evolving in different card games. I think something similar like this could happen in Yu-Gi-Oh! I believe that this is not as high impact enough that it will completely detract people from playing it because I don't see it as mandatory. However, at the same time, it is unique and cool enough that I think that could be incorporated into a competitive meta game. I think the best way to explain this idea is to just show you some examples. First off, we have Blue Eyes Master Dragon. It started with Blue Eyes because it's popular and you guys would click on the video and give me a thumbs up and subscribe. This is a plug, by the way. This is where you subscribe and click like. So there's a bunch of things that shouldn't be on this card just because of the way that the custom card maker works. Um, but basically the attribute, the stars, the pendulum scale, uh, and I think defense as well shouldn't be here. But let me just explain the card really quick. So over here, this pendulum box, I guess you could call it. This is, I guess, what you would call the summoning conditions of the master. And then this is the master's effect. And the most important thing here is that masters have attack points, and I know this says defense points, but this should say life points. Deck masters, if I could describe them in a nutshell, is that they are not monsters, they are players. So if you were to solemn warning a master summon, you, that, that just wouldn't work, right? Because it's not, you're not summoning a monster. It's what is, I guess, I've technically called in this as appearing. So they have their own life pool and they can only be destroyed when their life total reaches zero. If I attack Blue Eyes Master Dragon for 2000, my monster might die in the process, but I will inflict 2000 damage to its life points. And that's how you would deal with and clear masters. And they would be summoned next to the extra monster zone. I know I said I didn't want to overcomplicate the game and add a bunch of new zones and stuff, but I think one more new zone right next to the EMZ isn't really that hard to grasp and I don't think a lot of players would be detracted from it. So the summoning condition or the appearance of a master monster works as follows. You would have three, four, five maybe summoning conditions, maybe one, it just depends on how powerful the master is. But in theory, in concept, I don't think ideally I would want masters to be out on the field turn one. I think masters should be something that you kind of work towards over the course of multiple turns. Yeah, maybe I'm being naive here with Yu-Gi-Oh needing multiple turns. but. I guess they could just make masters have simpler conditions. You need to currently control Blue Eyes White Dragon on the field in order for this to make an appearance or master summon, I guess. You must have at least five dragons and you need to have drawn five cards outside of your draw phase. So once all of these three conditions are met, you are able to make this deck master appear. And I think what's really cool is that I think that you should be able to appear on your opponent's turn as well. So you don't need to summon your deck master as soon as you meet these conditions. You can hold it off maybe and decide when you want him to appear. Maybe you can use your master as an, a finishing blow. Maybe you want him from the beginning as fast as you can. It really just depends on the master. So when this master appears, you can destroy all spell and trap cards your opponent controls and then you can special a blue eyes monster from your hand, deck, extra deck or graveyard ignoring its summoning conditions. Dragons you control cannot be targeted by your opponent's card effects. I'm sure many of you are probably thinking, huh, that's really busted and overpowered. But remember, this took three turns to build towards and set up. It's not something you can realistically do turn one, at least in theory. But again, it depends on the master. They will have effects that are strong or weak, depending on how good or easy it is to achieve the summoning condition. So here's another cool example. It's Master Magician of Dark. You need to currently control Dark Magician, Dark Magical Circle and Eternal Soul. The Trinity, I guess, is for, for Dark Magician players. And also you would have needed to summon three spellcasters at least. So not this is not for one single turn. This is throughout the whole duel, you have needed to have uh, summoned 
three spellcasters. And also, in order to perform his master summon, you need to reveal a spellcaster in hand. Again, the attribute, the stars, the scale thing shouldn't be here, the pendulum XE thing that it says here, the spellcaster, even like the type I don't think needs to be here. Uh, again, these are players, they're not monsters. So again, this is just how the card maker works. It forces you to put these things in, so just kind of ignore that. But his effect is spell and traps you control are unaffected by your opponent's card effects. Once per turn, quick effect, you can special summon Dark Magician, a Dark Magician monster, by the way, not just Dark Magician himself, so you have options there, uh, from your hand, deck, or graveyard. When a Dark Magician is summoned while you control this master, banish one card on the field. It kind of fits with the theme of the Dark Magical Circle and stuff. Probably a little bit overpowered, maybe this like banish effect needs like to be a hard once per turn, so you can do it once in your turn, once in your opponent's turn. Again, don't focus on the balance of these cards. These are just ideas and these are just like kind of to give you a rough sort of theory of what it could be like. So I think it, this would be a good time to, now that you've seen some basic, uh, basic examples, I will have more in just a second, uh, to go over some rules. So basically the way I think that this should work is that each player has a, a master in their extra deck, but it doesn't take up an extra deck slot. So technically you have 16 cards now, right? You have your 15 card extra deck and you have your master slot, which is one and it's face up. The reason that I think that this should be face up is purely for gameplay reasons. I think it would be really cool and awesome for masters to just sort of appear once their condition is fulfilled, surprising your opponent. But there's some gameplay reasons why I don't think this would work. Some of the conditions could be really complicated, like the one I just had there, where it's, you know, summon three spellcasters, for example. It's not that confusing, but depending on the master, that could get players a little bit confused, and you might have arguments and judge cons, like, oh no, technically you didn't fulfill this condition. Uh, I only count four, you needed five or something, right? And then, you know, th there'll be like issues like that. So I don't want that to happen. Masters, again, are not monsters. They can't be mirror forced or warning or compulse. They are players. If you were to think about how you would interact with a player, you can't Raigeki your opponent. As much as you guys probably think of a lot of people that you would love to Raigeki, you can't Raigeki masters. So they go next to the EMZ in the master zone, and when they leave the field, after their life points reach zero, and that is the only way they can leave the field, is if their life points reach zero, unless of course maybe there's another master in the future who can directly affect masters somehow. But the point is, uh, is that once a master is reached zero in its life, you can uh, put it back to the master um, zone thing or whatever. And you can, if you wish, uh, perform the master summon conditions again, but I think they would have to be reset. So for example, if it says, you know, summon five blue eyes monsters, then you would start back at zero, even though you've fulfilled that condition previously that duel. So it just means you can't, after you fulfill the condition once, you can't just keep spam master summoning. But again, it's a work in progress. Maybe maybe that could be cool, maybe it's not. Maybe it's, that, that would be too overpowered. So like, again, I'm open to suggestions and stuff. Well, if it's considered a player, does that mean I now need to kill a master in order to attack my opponent's life points directly? I think that originally when I came up with this idea, I thought it would be really cool if masters actually protected your life points. So if I had a Dark Magician master on the field with 5,000 life, then you have to go through the ma Dark Magician before you can get to me. But I think this has gameplay impact and it's important to think that while that's cool and fun and interesting, gameplay wise, I think that would be a little bit tough to manage because, well, you would basically be dealing with an effective life pool of like 15,000 and it's also life points that get inflicted to you because it's a monster. So I think that having masters be able to block you uh, permanently would not really be good for time. So for gameplay reasons, I think that you can choose whether to attack your opponent or attack the master. I think we could have really cool effects and uh, I'm not very creative or imaginative, but here's a good example, I think, of sort of alternative uh, conditions. So this is Cinderon, Master of Flames. His summoning condition is you need to have inflicted 4,000 effect damage to your opponent that duel. Um, and you, ha you would have needed to have done no battle damage and summoned no monsters. I guess technically it's a pure burn card, right? Effect damage is now doubled. Cards that it would inflict effect damage can be activated from the hand and cannot be negated. If you would inflict battle damage to your opponent or summon a monster, you lose the duel. So this card basically says, hey, you can do double effect damage via burn to your opponent, but if you do any battle damage or summon a monster, you lose the duel. So again, I'm not trying to promote burn here. I'm not a fan of burn, but it's to give you a different sort of wider scope as to how far this can go in terms of conditions. Here's another example. It's Master Karibo. And I thought it would be cool to have masters that have very basic sort of requirements, um, but maybe have weaker effects in the process. So Master Karibo simply says, take fatal damage. 
When this master appears, restore your life points to the amount you had prior to the fatal attack. Your opponent cannot attack directly while you control Master Karibo. Master Karibo can only appear once per duel. In keeping with the Karibo theme of saving your life, I thought this was a pretty cool idea in that it pretty much doesn't really do anything special except give you 3000 extra life points and it restores your life to how it was before. For example, the Prophecy Monster has the condition that you need 5 plus spellbooks in your grave and your Banish Zone and then you need to reveal 3 spellbooks to special summon her, sorry not special summon, to uh, Master Summon to make her appear. Uh, from your hand. Uh, once per turn, you can pay 2000 life of this card. And by the way, if you have life point costs to pay, you can pay them through your master instead if you like. So for example, Cosmic Cyclone, you can choose to pay that through your master rather than your own life points. And I think that's a kind of interesting dynamic that maybe you can sacrifice some of your master's power to then help you do something. So she can discard a spell book to target two spell books, uh, one in the grave, one in the banished zone, add them to your hand and your prophecies can activate their turn during your opponent's turn. So I think it's really cool to have some synergy between the archetypes of the master. So like this is obviously a prophecy monster and we all know prophecy uh, priestess, she can banish a spellbook to pop a card in the field. Well, now you can use it on your opponent's turn with the power of her master. Got another example here of the Sky Striker master. Uh, it's called Mythic Sky Striker. Fun story, just if you're wondering. We were going to call it Mythic Summoning, but decided to keep it more in tandem with the anime because we had deck masses in the anime. So we just went with the term Master instead. So her summoning condition is 10 plus spells in your graveyard. Have four Striker Link monsters with different names in your graveyard. There's probably say four plus, but again, um, that's not uh, the point. And then you contribute a face up Sky Striker Ray. So you can do this in your opponent's turn. You can master summon in your opponent's turn. Uh, once per turn, you can shuffle. I'd probably make this a uh, quick effect. Um, that's probably what this should be. So a quick effect once per turn, you can shuffle three striker cards from your grave into the deck to destroy a card in the field. Uh, and then when this card's summoned, it gains uh, life equal to the number of spells in your grave ties 500. So it's going to have at least 5,000 life points. Maybe that's a little bit much. Maybe we could tune this down to 250. The point is, is like the actual balance of these cards isn't like that relevant. It's supposed to be focusing on the, this like stuff conceptually and what this kind of looks like as, like in theory and um so you know the focusing on the numbers and stuff isn't really relevant but yeah we have like uh, a meta card like you could have like meta uh, masters you could have very simple ones as i've shown earlier so yeah just stuff like that i think could be really cool if i hit like some absurd number of views and likes as i mentioned already maybe i'll hold some kind of competition where you guys can submit your masters for review or whatever but if you have any suggestions for changes to the rules and stuff like that and how you can maybe mix this up uh, feel free to leave a comment down below i will be reading all of them make sure you guys check out my patreon and discord join the community by the way uh, watch me on twitch every night and until next time comment like and subscribe adios